The closing years of the 1960s were a lot of things to a lot of kids, but proved to be an especially great time for anxious children who'd waited all week for Saturday morning cartoon television. A gang of clue-seeking teenagers along with their peanut butter sardine sandwich-eating Great Dane named Scooby-Doo made their first appearance. and a desert racing roadrunner with bright purple feathers was constantly being pursued by a very determined predator. <laughs> Paying $50,000 to Warner Brothers for the rights to use the cartoon character's name and image, Chrysler's Plymouth division set out to build a back-to-the-basics mid-sized performance hardtop. It was called the Roadrunner. Hello, and welcome to Wheels of the Past. Roadrunner. Proving to be extremely popular, the Roadrunner was introduced hot on the heels of another screaming success by the Plymouth Line. Since 1964, the Barracuda had been competing with the success of the Mustang, but had never quite gained the attention of Ford's pony car. But by 1970, the redesigned shorter and wider E-Body Barracuda was offered with massive high-performance engines and in a wide variety of high-impact colors, such as Vitamin C, Lemon Twist, and n -Violet. The name Tyrannosaurus Rex comes from the Latin translation of Tyrant Lizard King, the strongest and most fiercest carnivore of all time. Considered the most ferocious driving machine of the 1970s, if there was ever a Tyrannosaurus of the automobile world, it was certainly the early 70s Barracuda. From its humble beginnings, the first-generation Barracuda scarcely resembled a sports car, sharing many of its features with the Plymouth Valiant. But by 1970, the Cuda's all-new design had shed its previous fastback image and was now available as a hardtop or convertible in the Dodge Challenger class. Engine sizes had also grown exponentially with the high-performance craze. They ranged in size from the standard Mopar 318 to the outrageous bone-crushing power of the 426 cubic inch Hemi. As the 1970s began, the reign of flamboyant high output muscle cars as well as the traditional open car was quickly drawing to a close. By 1972, Chrysler had dropped the Cuda convertible, but the automaker was heavily involved in supplying various Hollywood studios with cars for movies and television. A few 71s were produced with 72 grills, which ended up on various productions such as the Brady Bunch, Doris Day, 
and a detective show called Mannix. He once jokingly described himself as a frustrated song and dance man who wound up typecast as a TV crime fighter. After such minor roles in movies such as Live Fast, Die Young, and The Day the World Ended, the Armenian American actor performed alongside James Garner in Maverick and Raymond Burr in Perry Mason. Landing a show of his own, Mike performed many of the stunts himself, sometimes breaking a wrist or dislocating a shoulder, but all in an effort to make his character more real than the traditional Bogart-style gumshoe. Mannix ran for eight seasons from 1967 to 75 during an era of such great crime time TV shows as Barnaby Jones, Beretta, Starsky and Hutch, and The Rockford Files. During the run of the show, Detective Mannix drove over a dozen cars, including a 67 Oldsmobile Tornado Roadster, customized by Batmobile builder George Barris, and a 1968 Dodge Dart convertible, also customized by Barris, with functional hood scoops, blacked out grille, and Raider Mag wheels, just like those on the Batmobile, only without the bat symbol. For the 1971-72 season, Old Joe drove three modified Cuda convertibles, all dark green. They had engines ranging in size from the standard 318 to a 440 Magnum. The car we're making our way through North Dakota to see today lives in Fargo and is the lone survivor of the Mannix Barracudas. Hello, Ken. Hey, Kerry. How are you? Good to meet you. Cold up here. Man, how much snow have y'all got? Oh, about 60 inches this year. 60 inches. A little inches. above average, oh yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so you got Joe Mannix here. I do. Wow. Old Joe Mannix from the television show Mannix. Tell us about it. Well, you have to be probably just over 50 to remember the show. But I, I was a collector, or I had some Barracudas in high school. And uh, after school, I would uh, see the Mannix show on TV. and. One day I remember seeing this exact car. Well, I knew they only made uh, the Cuda convertible in, for two years, 70 and 71. But here Joe drives up to, the, uh, to a curb with this car and it's got a 72 grill and a 72 back end. And I, I said to myself, I never realized they made a 72 Cuda convertible. But here, this is something that was done just for the show and for Joe Manning. So this is a 72 grill in a 71 car. Correct. And it, it all fits in, it, it like they interchange. Right, yeah, it was basically the same model. They, they, they had the Cuda until 1974, mm -hmm. but they, it's just the convertible that was discontinued after 71. So, um, so they just basically took 72 items uh, and uh, inserted them into the car. They also got rid of the 71 fender gills that would have been in a um, Cuda only. Do you mind if I open the door? No, go right ahead. So that's, uh, what's that, a tape recorder, a microphone? 
Yeah, a cassette player. Now, I don't think the cassette player was original to the show, uh, but he did have a microphone and a telephone in the car. And, and, uh, and, all right, and tell us about the, you said him talking into the mic. Yeah, I've seen uh, uh, several episodes where he'd be talking into the mic, recording something, or calling Peggy, I think. Uh, talking into the microphone. Talking into the microphone. And I would see him pick up uh, one of those old wall phones, you know, the the beige-colored handles. Actually in the car. Like yes, I, st I still car. actually have a phone that resembles that one. I just never did install it. Now, this one's got power windows. Yeah, a lot of the... Uh, production studio type cars, for some reason, they, they tended to get all the bells and whistles. So this for Barracuda, uh, uh, power windows is pretty rare. Uh, this was also has a six-way seat and air conditioning. Uh, so it came pretty loaded up for a Barracuda. So is this the original engine for this car? Yeah, original motor. This, uh, is, this, this is the original color down here too. This is what uh, the car was coated with, uh, kind of a light, kind of a Sherwood green, I think they called it. So it was originally green. Yep. They just changed the uh, type of green. Right. Well, this is absolutely beautiful. So you said you're a, you used to collect Mopars, huh? Right, I still have a couple more. You want to see them? Or? Oh, absolutely. What have you got? I've got a pink one, one of only three ever produced, and uh, a 446 pack convertible. Uh, also very rare car. Absolutely. We'd love to take a look. Super. So this is the infamous Moulin Rouge. That's correct. If it was a Plymouth, it was Moulin Rouge. If it was Dodge, it was called Panther Pink. But, but both were the same color. And pink code. Just different names. Just different names. Yep. And tell us about the taillight panel in this. The uh, taillight panel is the same on 70 and 71 models. The tail light in the 71 was a little different in the lens, but it fit in the same hole. This is what the Mannix car originally had. It originally had uh, this type of tail light panel instead of the Correct. one with the four yeah. round holes. Right, a little different tail light, but it fit in that hole. And then the 72 to 74 models of the Cuda or Barracuda ended up with the round tail lights like the Mannix car has. So. Now, how many of these pink cars did they make, the Moulin uh, Rouge? There was only three um, known to exist. Uh, there could have been one additional in Canada, but they don't have the numbers on that, and there's, I don't think anybody's ever found a fourth one. And uh, I actually own two of the three. I have recently sold one, uh, but, uh, but this is a... Uh, uh, the one that I have remaining, the, the first one had a white top and white interior, which was a nice uh, look together. So you had uh, two of the three you ever made. Yeah, and I did find the third one uh, in a wrecking yard in Montana. Uh, and it was still in a wrecking yard condition. I spoke to the owner, but they were not interested in selling. At one point, it would have been pretty cool to have all three. Three of three. Yeah. And for many years, I, uh, uh, I had the pink with white interior car, and that was the only one known to exist at the time. Pink so, with white interior. Yeah, so it was kind of a neat story. I got a call uh, one evening by a friend. He said, you'll never believe what I see, uh, I'm seeing. There's a guy that has a pink uh, Cuda for sale out of Pennsylvania. And, uh, and I called the guy, and I, it didn't matter what kind of condition it was in, I was going to own that car. Because I owned the first one and had the bragging rights to having the only one that ever existed, and here another one was found. Right. So fully restored the car and uh, uh, made something out of it that's very nice looking now. And uh, it's kind of unique to have something like that. And the engine in this one is what? That's a 340 small block. Uh, the only small block offered in a CUDA uh, was actually a uh, special order. The standard motor was a big block 383 four barrel. Uh, but this is a uh, 340 small block four barrel. And uh, there was actually uh, more of the 340s sold than the actual 383. Well, of course, this was the uh, this was your standard nice V8 four barrel uh, 
drive every day type engine that was yeah they were pretty peppy they did have 10 to 1 compression and and stuff and maybe because they were lighter they thought they'd be faster right. i don't know they probably beat the 3 to 3 to my knowledge but and over here what have we got over here uh this is a 446 pack convertible this is uh i've got uh three two barrel carburetors on it so it's pretty unique that way it's it is only about one of 12 cars built uh, out of Canada, and um, they don't know the exact numbers. This one here is unique because it was a promotional car built on the very first day of production in, on August 1st of 1969 for the 70 model year. And there were seven of these promotional cars that went to the dealerships in the uh, provinces, provinces of Canada and uh, uh, and so all seven of those were all the same. Uh, same go mango orange, white top, white interior, and uh, of course six back. This one I dolled up a little bit by putting the painted rubber bumpers on and the shaker hood. Otherwise it came with the same bulged hood as the Mannix car or the pink car behind us. So. All right, Ken, thank you so much for having us here in Fargo thank today. You. We appreciate it. It was fun. From snowy Fargo, North Dakota, this has been a presentation of Wheels of the Past. Just up the side or you might end up in a heap. Meep, meep. Road runner, road runner, runs down the road all day. Meep, meep. Even the coyote can't make a meep, meep. Road runner, the coyote's after you. Meep, meep. Road runner, if he catches you, you're through. Road runner. The coyote's after you. Meet me. Roadrunner.